Oh, hello. Oh, put that down. Um, just doing a bit of DIY God O Y. And, uh, oh, right, the video from last week. Okay, so turns out I cut out the entire section about uh, stuff going on in Inkscape last week because um, the video was already very long and it, the, the subject that I needed to cover, which is about uh, Inkscape's um, GTK4 migration, uh, needed more space to be able to talk about it properly. Um, I guess we could talk about it now. So I guess if you're ready, First of all, let me give a big thank you to all of the people that sponsor me. Um, it's very important to me that I'm able to spend time on Inkscape and um, fixing the fe features, making the features, I should say, and fixing the problems that uh, you guys need me to fix. Um, it's really important to me um, just because I think that users being involved in production of free software is where we need to get to as a community. It's where I see the future of free software is um, user involvement, users directing programmers what to do. And it's through your patronage, your LibrePays, um, that I'm able to spend time proving that this kind of uh, mechanism works. Okay, so let's talk about uh, Inkscape. This is stuff that I am involved with because I'm a member of the leadership committee in Inkscape. Um, and it's not work that I am actually programming myself. Um, so I'm involved in meetings and community management and stuff like that and discussions, but no more than that. Some of what I'm about to talk about is it's either it's purely my opinion or it's speculative. Um, and I'm hoping that I can phrase things correctly so I don't insult anybody. The intention here is really not to insult anybody at all. It's more about um, explaining what's going on in Inkscape and some of the struggles that the project is having and some of the concerns that we have. Um, I should also make it clear that, like, of course, this is a personal video from me as an individual developer. It is not a statement of the Inkscape project as a whole. Um, but I figure that you guys should really know what's going on inside of Inkscape. Okay, so this year, Inkscape has spent about 70, no, about $60,000 on GTK4 migration work. Um, this is split between um, a contractor from outside, uh, a contractor from inside the project, and uh, various other um, contracting that happened on the sides, including a Google Summer of Code project, and a bunch of volunteers also put in their efforts. The whole idea is to be able to upgrade Inkscape from using the framework that we currently use called GTK3 to using the newer framework, GTK4. So let's get into um, where we are with that. We've managed to um, upgrade the vast majority of Inkscape. We actually have builds that kind of sort of work with some major caveats that are still being worked on um, in Linux and we actually have people looking at builds in other pl platforms as well. Uh, there's been a gigantic amount of work that's happened this year. Uh, the vast majority of the budget that Inkscape has spent has been on this work. Um, for comparison, we spent about uh, $18,000 on uh, bug fixing in the, um, uh, what, what do we call it? The bug fixing program? Sorry. Uh, we spent about eighteen thousand dollars on the on the bug fixing programs, and we spent about uh, ten thousand dollars on uh, conference events. That's basically bringing everybody together so we can hack and discuss things. And we spent about uh, three thousand dollars on hardware, computer hardware. Um, so this is this is the most amount of money that the Inkscape project has ever spent in in in, in any year. Um, in fact, it may be more money that we've spent in one year than the rest of the 20 years of the pro project has spent ever. Um, so we're, we're fairly committed to this GTK4 development. 
because we think it puts us on a much better pathway to getting uh, to basically unpicking one of the one of the biggest hurdles that Inkscape has, which is its renderer. Uh, currently, its rendering is all um, CPU bound. That basically means that it, it all the graphics is being done on the central processing unit, the main part of the computer. Um, this is not how things are done today. Today, what you would do to do graphics is you would ask the graphics processing unit or GPU to do the work for you. And we've never been able to take advantage of the GPU because of the way that our render is set up. Um, in order to move to GPU re rendering, um, we really need a framework, a widget framework that doesn't get in the way. And that's part of what upgrading to GTK4 should allow us to do, is basically um, provide us with a with a with an, an open pathway so that future development can actually provide that GPU support. Um, it's also important because that rendering from framework holds back things like color management and a bunch of other things. There are ways around it. I'm looking into them myself for my own work, but it should be noted that the renderer is pretty much the major obstacle that Inkscape has. Okay. So we made the move to move to GTK4 um, really, really early in terms of GTK's overall maturity. Um, typically, GTK development uh, happens in stages, and they sort of create a new version, like say from GTK2 to GTK3, which breaks a whole bunch of stuff, but then um, they fix a bunch of things as they go, and, and over the intervening couple of years, they'll release a GTK version that is much more stable and mature. Um, when we moved Inkscape from GTK2 to GTK3, this is kind of what happened. Inkscape moved pretty slowly, I would say, in terms of um, moving from the old frame from framework. In fact, it may have been 10 years before the initial release of GTK3 and Inkscape's final adoption. Um, and in fact, other projects uh, like the GNU image manipulation pro pro program still doesn't have a GTK3 release. That just shows you like how long it can take. Um, but um, you can notice that like we're really pushing hard to get to GTK4 because we think it's important. Um, but it kind of means that we've hit some snags along the way. The maturity of GTK is not what we would have expected. Um, some of that is just finding bugs. Um, Inkscape is a very large program and we use a great deal of uh, functionality in any framework that we use. Um, and so it's important to understand that like we're bound to find problems. And um, one of the problems that we also find is that uh, uh, GTK4 isn't as mature on other platforms as it is on Linux. Um, this is completely understandable, in fact, because the GNOME project itself is a Linux-based uh, project, right? The entire project's uh, ethos is to provide a Linux desktop, which means that their very, very tiny GTK uh, developer team is focused on Linux problems. Um, but Inkscape's uh, ethos is providing free so software and the capability of running free so software to as many people as possible, whether they're using Linux or not. And this means that we provide uh, Mac OS and Windows for support. Now, traditionally, what's happened is, is that um, companies uh, from outside would come into GTK and they'd add in the support for Mac OS and Windows. And over the years, a lot of the problems would be kind of cleaned up because companies with different needs would come in, they pay developers to like work on problems, and it would generally work. Now, GTK4 is basically in a similar place where its support on macOS and win Windows is completely contingent upon um, the ability for, for other actors to support it, like all of the way. And Inkscape's um, quick adoption means that there's not been as much of that work as would have otherwise happened. Um, I hope I'm describing this well because it is a really difficult to explain situation where we depend upon people in some other pro project to do a whole bunch of work who are working with a whole bunch of other usually companies uh, to provide support that they themselves don't, don't, don't provide. And through that consensus in the open source world, uh, Inkscape's uh, multi-desktop delivery is possible. And um, yeah, it, so we, we have a, a really interesting discussion to have inside of the Inkscape project because 
when we try and do things like macOS support for G G GTK4, we're finding that the upstream is not ready yet. And so we have some difficult questions to ask about um, who is responsible, uh, should we be responsible, how much money does that uh, require us to put in towards GTK4 development on macOS, and, uh, and, and, and also some issues about cult culture, uh, because a Linux project like GNOME, um, we find it difficult to broach subjects that they are not interested in supporting. And this is, this is definitely a cultural issue, um, but sometimes they kind of seem rude. Like, I, I don't want to be offensive because they're a tiny team doing amazing work, but uh, if you talk about Mac OS or you talk about Windows or you talk about uh, C++, which is Inkscape's language, um, People can be a little bit terse with you, and this this is a problem for our community management because it means that if we send volunteers to contribute to GTK, they're going to have a hard time. They're going to have a hard time because they are going to be forced to use C, which is fine. That's what their project is. Um, but if they ask questions and their understanding is in C++, they're going to have issues, or they're going to want to contribute in Mac OS, they're going to have issues. Um, and so we do have probably some... Uh, discussions to have with the GTK developer team about what their actual position is, uh, what their um, the, not their developer like their resource developer position. We know what that is. They're gonna they're gonna support Linux, but what their um, community management position is like? Should we expect to be welcomed with open arms into um, GNOME if we, you know, contribute? Uh, a, a whole bunch of money into hiring a contractor to do upstream work. Um, you know, is that going to be welcome there? I hope so. And uh, my guess is yes, but we absolutely have to make sure before we commit that kind of budget. Um, you know, Inkscape is a charity. We have to be both uh, responsible to our uh, donators and we have to be uh, careful that we're actually being uh, frugal and we don't waste money, uh, hopefully not, um, in the kinds of decisions that we make, right? Okay, so those are some some of the thorny issues that are going on um, inside of Inkscape. Um, these are problems that are probably going to be picked over uh, in the new year. Uh, we're going to uh, be a part of an event called FOSDEM in Brussels. Uh, hopefully we'll get to meet up with a whole bunch of the GNOME developers there. Uh, in-person talks are great. We love to talk in per person over a beer. Uh, over a coffee, you know, just ways in which you can have an interpersonal relationship that's not quite so uh, clinical as you might find online. Um, so as you can see, like, Ink Inkscape is not sort of like a, a solely individual thing. It depends upon uh, what we classify as upstreams is, you know, other projects where there are either volunteers, or there are charity organizations like GNOME, or there are Sometimes, unfortunately, nobody. Like, there are some unmaintained libraries upstream. And the Inkscape project, I think, as we mature, as we become more um, responsible about how we're doing development and how we're delivering, um, you know, a, a, a good release to users, uh, we need to think about taking that responsibility seriously about our upstreams, right? Security, yes, but, you know, also things like uh, whether they work for the operating systems that we say we're going to support, and how much time and effort that Inkscape should be putting itself into in order to support those desktops. Okay, thank you for watching this video. I'm going to take the next two, two weeks off for Christmas, and I'll be back with a year in report. And yeah, I hope you have a great holiday, and um, this video was interesting for you.